Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Hi, happy Thursday, almost Friday. It's May 16th. Traffic has been interesting this morning, and we will be checking in with RJ in just a moment. But uh, all morning long, Mike Ostrange was telling us on to be storm alert this afternoon. And I have a feeling we have a similar message from you, Justin. Yeah, it still looks the same, guys. We're going to have a chance for some showers and storms, especially as we head towards midday. And then by the afternoon, we'll watch for some of those severe storms. Potentially, uh, not everyone's going to get severe weather, but uh, it's going to be hit or miss around the area. So let's start with the radar. Uh, we don't have much out there at the moment. Uh, in fact, it's uh, quite uh, quiet. But you go down towards the coast, there are some showers and storms developing there. And up across North Texas, we're starting to see some development. As we get more heating, uh, then showers and storms will start to take shape. I want to show you one of our computer models. And notice, yeah, nothing right now. But as we get towards, say, midday, showers start to develop. And then by 1, 2 o'clock, it's got storms blowing up around the area. Now, don't pay too close attention to exactly where these storms are. But it gets the general idea across that this is a time frame that we need to watch. Uh, this is also a time frame where we could see some of those stronger storms. Even through 4 o'clock, still showing some activity. Uh, in, uh, into this evening dinner time, I think things start to uh, become more isolated. Uh, but still, we can't take uh, storms completely out of the forecast. And then by the time we get into tomorrow, more showers and storms uh, will develop. But this time along the coast, so our rain chances here in San Antonio are a little bit lower although we may see an isolated storm tomorrow afternoon. So bottom line here, the forecast for today, 30% chance of rain this morning, and then we'll start to bring those rain chances up. Noontime, 40%, and that'll be the case into the afternoon. Temperatures will be in the 80s for the most part, but very, very humid today. And the severe storm threats, hail tops the list as it often does with some gusty winds. I don't think flooding is going to be too much of an issue, and we can't completely rot a tornado, but that's a low-end risk. We're going to talk much more about all this. Uh, another look at that forecast for you, too, coming up in just a couple minutes. But busy on the roadways this morning. Let's talk to RJ. Been very, very busy uh, on this Thursday morning, and we are now going on about three and a half hours dealing with this incident right here, I-35 South at Splashtown Road. This is something that we first uh, brought to you during a Good Morning San Antonio, the early hours here, and uh, this is basically the situation. We had a car hauler that caught on fire, had multiple vehicles that it was hauling, so we had the crane out there for the better part, about 45 minutes or so, uh, actually just removing each car individually. So that's all the activity that you're seeing out here we've had fire department on the scene we've had text dot on the scene here now some good news is that you do see that traffic is moving through the area on two of the main lanes so that's good news the far right-handed lane that is still shut down at the moment along with the shoulder and we do see that traffic is moving through the access road so there's our crash right there i-35 south at splashtown that's going to be right before you hit the Frostbank center drive area if you are coming in from the east side of town into downtown san antonio we also have a stalled vehicle being reported i-35 i-35 south at Bamsey. So again, a couple different things here on the east side of town that uh, a lot of our drivers have been dealing with for hours on end now. 1604 right now, north side of town, westbound lanes, 1604 Redland, at Redland Road. We have a stalled vehicle that's backing up traffic here. A little bit here for all of our folks that are driving into 281 and the 1604 area. All right, so we're just going to rip off the Band-Aid here because we have got a major, major closure that we're going to tell you about. Uh, starting today, we have got a, a major, major closure that's actually starting tomorrow night. You kind of know the drill here on the far northwest side. Basically, 1604 east and westbound will be closed from La Cantera all the way to Stone Oak Parkway. This is the, uh, I guess, the longest, the biggest closure that I've seen in terms of the eastbound and westbound lanes of 1604 when it comes to the 1604 north expansion. So so we're going to have the four clover leaves, the interchange area that will be completely shut down this weekend. And then I 10 east and westbound from La Quintera down to UTSA Boulevard. All of that will be shut down as this weekend as well. Of course, this is all weather permitting. If you want more information on detours and maps. But again, if you live in this area, you kind of already know the drill out here. It's just unfortunate that this is going to stretch all the way now to Stone Oak Parkway this uh, weekend here. And uh, we have all this information there on KSAT.com. One more quick look at this incident here again, current conditions. 35 southbound at Splashtown Road. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Here's today's 9 at 9. 
President Biden and Donald Trump are set for two debate showdowns. Both presidential candidates have accepted an invitation from CNN for a June 27th debate and ABC's invitation for a second debate on September 10th. This comes after Biden pulled out of the traditional debate set up by the Commission on Presidential Debates and challenged Trump to a debate showdown. The Biden campaign did decline an offer for a third debate in October hosted by Fox. Inflation is easing just a bit. The latest consumer price index shows costs up 3.4% in April compared to a year ago, down slightly from the month before. But while the report shows more progress in the battle to tame prices, it still may not be enough to convince the Federal Reserve to lower interest rates in the next couple of months. A trip to the grocery store was a little less expensive last month. Grocery prices fell 0.2% from March to April. The drop comes after years of price increases, followed by months of prices remaining flat. But while the slight dip is a welcome relief, grocery prices are still higher than they were a year ago. More people are maxing out credit cards. A new report from the New York Fed says nearly one in five people are carrying balances. They're at least 90% of their credit limits. All told, Americans have over $1.1 trillion on our credit cards. Some forecasters are calling it a nightmare scenario for weather. Southeastern states already waterlogged from this month's severe weather. Now could get as much as three inches of rain per hour during new rounds of storms. Forecasters say parts of East Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi could see significant flash flooding today. The threat could stretch into Alabama, Georgia, and Florida tomorrow. New data shows southwest border encounters in the U.S. dropped 6% last month. According to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Agency, border encounters in San Diego, California were up nearly 49% in April. However, the new data shows overall border encounters last month were down almost 30% compared to April of 2023. The House passed a bill that renews authority for the Federal Aviation Administration. The measure includes provisions that require airlines to give cash refunds to passengers when flights are canceled. It also requires installation of runway technology at many airports that can prevent airplane collisions. The Senate passed the legislation before it went to the House, so now it's just waiting for the president's signature. Uber is now offering a shuttle service for things like concerts and sporting events. Uber Shuttle lets users reserve up to five seats a week in advance. Uber says drivers will be licensed to operate larger transport vehicles and shuttles will only operate at events listed in the app. New tools to detect stolen phones. Google rolling out a new security feature for Android phones that includes a theft detection lock, which can sense unusual motion like a thief grabbing your phone, and then it can immediately lock your screen. And that's today's Nine at Nine. It is called the Edgar haircut. Many in San Antonio may be familiar with that hairstyle. Well, now it's leading to some controversy for a local business owner who tried to poke fun at it. So earlier this month, Ricardo Ortiz, the owner of El Camino Food Truck Park downtown, posted an image on Instagram that shows the no symbol over a picture of a young man with the so-called Edgar haircut. Well, under it, he wrote, uh, should we enforce a no chili bowl policy? He says it was just a joke, but not everyone thought it was funny. And he told Stefania Jimenez that now some people are threatening him and he wanted to stop and for them to hear him out. Just a joke. Hundreds of people commented the post didn't go viral, but enough people aren't happy about what Ricardo wrote. A few sent him threats. Some called what he wrote racist. Kind of just kind of blown out of proportion. The haircut is associated with Latino men, and it's thought to have originated from indigenous cultures. For really what it is with the hair longer, just on the sides right here than the bottom. This barber is with Jefito's Cuts on the west side and says younger clients ask for it all the time. It's just a haircut to me. I mean, it's just something that everybody's been doing right now. Like 20-year-old Javier Garcia, who says he likes the way it looks, but also says people associate the hairstyle with crime. I don't know. I guess people ruined the haircut. And that brings us back to Ricardo. He wants people to know the post was never meant to be taken seriously. After all, some of his own employees have the so-called Edgar, which we confirmed when we went to El Camino. I have a ton of family members with a haircut. I think it's hilarious, but 
I also can relate because when I was a teenager, I had the bald head with the big bangs and stuff like that. Ricardo says he won't apologize for making a joke, but also wants people to know how he feels about San Antonio. I know that maybe some people had their feelings hurt or they might feel some type of way about the comments or the jokes, but I do want them to know that I love my community. Stefania Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. Stephanie said when they went out yesterday for this story, they asked people like the barber and Javier what they thought about Ricardo's comments. While they didn't necessarily agree with him, they also didn't like the idea that he was getting threats. And they said everyone's allowed to share their opinions without being afraid for their safety. And some of you have commented on this story as well on Facebook. Yeah, let's take a look at some of those comments. Emilio R. said, this is America where everyone is free to have a bad haircut. And Norma Jean said the owner doesn't need to apologize. It's his business. It's already he's already said it was meant as a joke. And Joe G said we need more of these posts at LOL. And Joe H said the owner doesn't need to apologize. Only the ones getting offended are ones who can't get in the bar area. End quote. Well, you can tell us now what you think by commenting on the story on KSET.com or on social media. Well, moving on now, we're almost to the weekend and there's some fun events going on today. Starting today, city's first ever Walk Live concert. This is, is this right? Oh, okay. It is coming up. Okay, all right. I think we jumped ahead accidentally. Yes. Time right now is 909, 76 degrees. Coming up on GMSA at nine. Well, football fans are ready for the new NFL season. The full schedules were released last night. RJ takes a look at the Cowboys and the Texans matchups this year when we come back. Look out there with live cam. I'm actually kind of excited about the rain. Just hope it's not too severe because uh, we do need it. And I'm also sure. excited that it's only going to get up to about the mid 80s today. That's right? it. Yeah, a, a bit of an improvement from yesterday where yeah. we were back in the 90s. But uh, you said it right. Uh, we, we want the rain. We don't necessarily want the severe weather, but we may get both. Uh, that's just uh, how it goes this time of year. So let's start with the radar. I'll tell you, there's nothing out there right now. There's nothing to be concerned about at the moment. We see a couple showers down along the coast. Uh, yeah, there could be a few sprinkles, some drizzle. Uh, there's enough moisture out there for that, certainly. But we're not seeing that much of that, at least at the moment. Uh, let's take a look outside. 76 here in San Antonio, 77 in New Braunfels, 77 in Seguin, 72 Bernie, 74 in Kerrville. Uh, but look at the humidity. It is sky high. With these southeasterly winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour. So the moisture has increased quite a bit and it is very, very sticky out there. I want to show you the big picture and you'll notice we got storms ongoing across north central Texas. Starting to see some development back out here around San Angelo and then along a boundary out to the west. So these are all things we're going to watch in this kind of pattern. Boundaries are a big thing where they end up, where they push. Uh, that is uh, going to allow more storms to develop. So th that's something we'll keep a close eye on. Uh, but one thing that we know, we're starting to get a little more lift coming in here. And as we do, uh, let's say uh, by noontime, we may start to see some of these thunderstorms developing around the area. And then by 1, 2 o'clock, depending on which model you look at. Now, this is a different model than what I showed you off the top of the show, but it, it has a similar idea. Uh, we'll start to see some thunderstorms developing, and this is a point in time where we could see some of these storms go severe. The atmosphere is set up for that. Uh, by 4 o'clock, this model shows a lot of the storms starting to push north and east up the I-35 corridor, but still uh, showing the potential for severe weather. But even around 5 o'clock, still shows some storms coming through with things finally kind of winding down a little bit this evening. Uh, and then tomorrow, We'll watch what goes on along the coast. That's where we could see more storms flare up by tomorrow morning. I think this will be just south and east of San Antonio. But even tomorrow afternoon, I think we could still get some storms here around town before rain chances completely go away this weekend. Uh, so all that to say, it's going to be hit or miss type stuff. Uh, but we need to certainly keep an eye, eye, eye out for severe weather. The risk today, if you're looking at a scale of 1 to 5, is at a 2 for most of Bear County and San Antonio. A little lower as you go south and west, the severe risk gets much higher as you go north and east up towards Austin, Round Rock, and uh, Dallas, and Waco, and those areas. Uh, in fact, much of East Texas uh, is underneath that risk, that 3 out of 5 risk. Our risk. Here today, I think the main threat is going to be hail 
and then winds as well. So those two things, this is what we often see around here. Flooding is a little lower risk, and tornadoes, I think, are low in risk as well. All things we need to watch for sure, but uh, hail and gusty winds are going to be the main problems, I think. Uh, and then you get into the flash flood risk. Not much around here. I don't think our rainfall totals are going to be huge, but you get up towards Waco and uh, into East Texas, Tyler, Nacogdoches, into parts of Louisiana. And that's where severe flooding is possible, flash flooding, uh, with some really heavy rain. So if you are headed east or northeast, know that. 40% chance of rain today, 88 89 Friday, 20% chance of rain. Uh, and then we get into some big time heat. 97 Saturday, 97 Sunday. And we've got more hot temperatures much of next week. But keep the KSAT weather app handy, as we always say. And uh, we'll be live on your app if we need to be later this afternoon. Thank you, Justin. Well, the matchups for the 2024-2025 NFL season are all set. So yesterday, the full NFL schedule was released. A lot of people talking about it. And there are a few big games to look forward to. That's right. RJ is back with highlights of both the Cowboys and the Texans schedule. We spent a lot of time off camera kind of dissecting yeah, this yeah. this morning. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. I mean, basically, this is like NFL Christmas in May yeah. right now as they release the full schedule for all the NFL teams, including all the dates, primetime games, what you need to know. So let's go ahead and break down, of course, America's team, the Dallas Cowboys. They are opening week one at the Cleveland Browns. This will also be uh, Tom Brady's debut in the Fox, uh, the announcer booth there. So there's going to be, I'm guessing, a, a little bit of people going to be watching this game here as the Cowboys go on the road to take on the Browns to open the season, and uh, it looks like Cleveland might get Deshaun Watson back. Their Cowboys home opener is there. It's going to be against the New Orleans Saints. That's going to be at Jerry World, a noon kickoff there. And then week four, uh, they are on the road at the New York Giants. That's a 7:15 kickoff. That's a Thursday night game, and that's actually the first of uh, six primetime games that the Cowboys are going to have this year. Week seven is going to be a nice time for the bye, kind of get everyone rested up. Let's check out the back end of the Cowboys schedule here real quick because they get the Eagles for the first time in two 2024 on November 10th. That's going to be at home. And then they get the Texans. This is going to be an interesting matchup. A Monday night matchup. Lone Star Showdown. CJ Stroud versus Dak Prescott. Also, the Diggs brothers going against each other. Stefan Diggs versus Trayvon Diggs. That should be a fun matchup. Of course, the Thanksgiving Day game. That's always a big one. They are taking on the Giants there at Jerry World. 3.30 kickoff. And then they are closing out the regular season week 18, either January 4th or the 5th against Mark, the Washington Commanders. So it should be an interesting season to see how things play out. I'm picking the Cowboys of about nine and eight season. Right now they're projected at about 11 wins. I'm saying they're going to go nine and eight. I, I didn't like their offseason very mm. much. So we'll see. <laughs> Sounds like a Vikings fan's projection. Yeah. You know what? Cowboys don't play biased. the Vikes this year. So. That's why I don't go too deep into this either, because you yes. know I'm a Washington yeah, fan. Exactly, so exactly. That's my um, fault. Cowboys Let's, are going to win them all. Yeah, oh, they're, yeah. 17 and 0. Yes. There you go. Are you <laughs> shocked that Stephanie would make that projection? Not at all. Not at all. Um, all right, guys, real quick. Texans, let's run through their key games here. They are kicking things off against the Colts. They're going to be on the road there. Again, CJ Stroud coming in second year, taking on another second year quarterback, Anthony Richardson there in Indianapolis. And then this will be a fun matchup. Week two, Sunday night matchup, C.J. Stroud versus Caleb Williams. The Bears number one, the top pick in this year's NFL draft. Then they travel to Lambeau week seven. Week 11, we mentioned that big Cowboys Monday night showdown there at Jerry World. Should be fun. Texans, Cowboys. Let's check out the back end of the Texans schedule. Bye week is late here. Week 14. You never really like to have the bye week that late, but uh, that's what the schedule makers gave them. And then they have a Saturday game against the Chiefs there, taking on Patrick Mahomes at Arrowhead, and then they get the Ravens on Christmas Day. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the Christmas Day stuff here. Uh, they get Baltimore at home in Houston Christmas Day, and they're closing things out with the Tennessee Titans. My prediction for the Texans right now, 10 to 11 wins. And I think that C.J. Stroud is just going to continue to get uh, better. 100% on board yeah. with that prediction. Yes. All yep. right. So we mentioned uh, the, the Christmas Day games, guys. So Netflix this year, we were talking about this also yesterday, Mark. Next, Netflix this year, for the first time ever, will stream live games on Christmas Day. So you will have to be a Netflix subscriber in order to watch these games, including that Texans uh, Chiefs game. So we were saying yesterday, you now need to have access to not only the major broadcasts, Fox, CBS, NBC, 
PC, but you also need to have uh, Peacock, you need to have Netflix, and you also need to have Amazon Prime and maybe even YouTube TV in order to watch all the NFL games <laughs> this year. Um, it is going to look crazy. Because DirecTV <laughs> moved from, uh, sorry, uh, Sunday Ticket moved from DirecTV yeah. over to, to YouTube. To Yes, right. to YouTube. So uh, that's available wow. through YouTube TV. So yeah, first time ever though, Netflix as they get into the game the NFL game, Christmas Day. Okay. Or you just need a lot of friends, like <laughs> friends with Netflix. Get jump on with, their password. With friends, Amazon. Friends with Sunday ticket. <laughs> well, that too, yes. You know, there's a lot of gatherings, a lot you of... Know, password sharing, you know. if it's allowed. <laughs> well, <laughs> sh sh I mean, not that, you know, just like, you know, order, just, pe order just, pizza and, you know, yeah. hang out together. Yeah. <laughs> that too. The password is case at 12. Um, okay, thank you, RJ. Thanks, Appreciate thank it. You. 921, 76 degrees. Let's look out there with Zoo can this morning. Our friends the hippos, are they moving? There's one. There's one, there, I bottom see. Bottom of the screen. Okay. Oh, they are? They're there. Yeah, they're, oh, okay, I see the other one barely. Very bashful hippos, but hippos, guess what? I'm glad they're Expect there. some rain. Because again, yes. we've seen instances lately where, where they weren't there. They were there like during Justin's forecast yes. and then we take this camera And then shot, they move on. And they're gone again. No, but you can see this guy right here. Right. Yeah, right on the bottom of your screen. Well, it will be a good day to go to the zoo, but you just need an umbrella and a raincoat. With warmer temperatures in our forecast, you might be ready to hit the pool, but the danger of drowning is apparently getting more real every year. New CDC numbers show that for the first time since 2019, there's been an increase in drowning deaths in the U.S. The CDC points to the almost 40 million people who don't know how to swim. Erica Hernandez breaks down which groups are most at risk and what's being done here in San Antonio to encourage everyone to learn water safety. The sounds of summer are upon us. The rise in temps mean more of us will be heading to the pool, lake, river, or beach. But one thing many of us may not know is how to swim. The latest CDC numbers show that between 2020 to 2022, 4,500 people died from drowning. Those numbers increasing for the first time since 2019. More than 40 million Americans do not know how to swim. According to the CDC, over half have never taken a swimming lesson. Let's break those numbers down by demographic. 63% of black adults and 72% of Hispanic adults have reported never taken a swimming lesson. What we try to do is make it as accessible as possible um, to uh, you know, get skills and confidence um, around water um, uh, for everyone in San Antonio. The YMCA of Greater San Antonio is on a mission to provide the opportunity to teach the community how to swim, especially teaching about water safety. Water safety lessons is big, especially starting in the summer. Um, so today is actually uh, International Water Safety Day. Uh, so kicking that off. So all throughout the month, um, starting in May, we're offering free water safety lessons. All you have to do is uh, sign up online and reserve um, your free class. The city of San Antonio also offers free group swim lessons. The Let's Swim essay program launches later this summer. There's also the U.S. National Water Safety Action Plan in place to hire diverse aquatic staff that look like the communities they serve and programs being created to meet specific needs. As for some basic safety tips, don't swim alone if you're not confident. Even if children have had some lessons, always supervise when in or around water. Build fences that usually enclose and separate the pool from the house. Wear a life jacket. Don't drink alcohol while swimming and learn CPR skills. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Super important around here because all of our lakes, although low, mm -hmm. are man-made lakes. There were old canyons and they flooded them, so the drop-off is so steep. Yes. That's why we have, it seems like, repeated drownings at places like Canyon Lake. Yeah, it uh, can be deceiving, and mm -hmm. especially if you're not, you know, watching out for that. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. 927, 76 degrees. There's more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a program that gives veterans a chance to get, to get out and to hang out with others while also playing golf, even if they have disabilities. Plus, playoffs on the mind of the San Antonio Brahmas of the UFL. When we come back, RJ is going to be talking with head coach Wade Phillips about how the team is focusing on these next critical games coming up. Let's look out there with live cam. We're starting with 76 degrees. You can already see the clouds. 
Uh, sort of excited about the rain. I hope nobody gets, you know, a bunch of damage like the last time around. Uh, sure. I, you know, uh, I do think we have a chance for some storms today. Rain would be great. Uh, unfortunately, that is going to come with some storms and the potential for some severe weather. Uh, as we look at the radar right now, there's not much out there. We are, we are keeping an eye on what's going on up there around San Angelo. Some bigger storms starting to take shape there. And in general, I think we're going to get a complex of showers and storms coming out of North Texas. But also before that happens, some activity may develop here around San Antonio. The models are hinting at that. So it's something we'll watch. Right now we're pretty socked in with cloud cover. Uh, the one exception is off to the east of San Antonio where the sun is peeking out. Any sun we get today is just going to add to the instability of the atmosphere. Uh, but right now cloudy and uh, doesn't look like we're going to get a whole lot of sun today. 40% chance of showers and storms as we head towards midday. So if you have lunch plans, check the radar, check the KSAT weather app before you step out. And then by this afternoon, uh, we're going to keep that 40% chance of rain. Bottom line, scattered around the area. It'll be hit or miss. Not everyone's going to get rain. Uh, but what storms we do see likely become strong, and hail would be the main threat. We're going to talk more about the severe weather threat coming up. Uh, but rain chances do taper off a little bit tonight. Uh, then we'll get one more opportunity for a few storms tomorrow before the heat really kicks in. Uh, we'll look at that weekend forecast for you, too, coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. Only three games left in the UFL regular season, and the San Antonio Brahmas are trying to keep their playoff chances alive. Well, RJ is back with a special guest to talk about the Brahmas' playoff chances. That's right, Stephanie and Mark. We are now being joined by the one and only head coach, Wade Phillips, of your San Antonio Brahmas. Coach Phillips, thank you very much for taking some time out of your busy, busy schedule to be with us. First of all, Coach, playoff opportunity here on the line for you guys. How excited are you to be able to get these next couple of the games here at the Alamo Dome in front of the home crowd. Yeah, that's great for us. We're, you know, we're tied for first place right now. Uh, certainly, if we keep winning, we can remain there. So, uh, and the fans, we're looking forward to seeing the fans in our hometown. All right, Coach, so uh, your season has definitely had its share of uh, nail-biting moments here and there. You had another uh, just tremendous come-from-behind win uh, last week uh, on the road. It was really some impressive stuff. So just talk about this team's resiliency to be able to adjust in the fourth quarter and basically come through when it's uh, most needed. Yeah, it's a, it's a good sign that, that we played really well under pressure. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of close games, and, and we've come through. Um, even coming from behind with two minutes or three minutes left in the game. So uh, we have a lot of grit with this team, um, and I hope our, our fans enjoy watching them. All right, Coach, you mentioned the next couple of weeks or so. How are you just kind of keeping the guys focused and making sure that they are definitely taking things one week at a time? Because, of course, you know, with playoffs on the line, potentially getting down the road a little bit, XF, you know, UFL playoffs, how are some things holding out on your end, and where, how are you keeping these guys together and focused? Well, I'm, once you talk playoffs and, hey, uh, you know, that, that helps them focus a lot. I mean, we're, uh, we have a great opportunity, and we know that. Uh, we also can win the Texas championship. Uh, we beat uh, Houston. We beat Arlington. So we have Arlington one more game. If we win that, we're, we're Texas champs, and we're, we'd be proud of that, too. Yeah, you guys take on Arlington, of course. They're coming off of a big weekend as well. Talk a little bit about that rivalry and what you're seeing from the Renegades as they come to the Alamo Dome. Well, the record wasn't good, but they scored 47 points last week, and their quarterback actually is leading the league in almost every category. So, uh, And Luis Perez was the MVP of the, of the championship, XFL championship last year. So the quarterback is really playing well, and uh, it's going to be a big challenge for us. Yeah, Luis Perez is definitely a guy that uh, is very familiar to a lot of the uh, folks here down here in San Antonio. So, Coach, uh, you know, just want to get to your uh, last message here. What is the message to the fans? I know that you guys have been going out to the community. I want to say I like your dance moves, Coach. I saw that during Fiesta, and every time the Brahmas win or have these come-from-behind moments, they always post this viral clip of you doing a little dance there just in an effort to <laughs> kind of celebrate. So what's it mean to be back in front of the fans, and what do you want – the message to be to the fans oh, for this week and the next week at the Alamo Dome? Well, like I say, come see us play. We've got a really good football team. I think you'll really be proud of them. And you'll be excited. Uh, there's a lot of excitement in our games anyway. So uh, come out and see us, support us, and, and we'll do great for you. 
Coach, I got to ask you one question here because we were talking earlier in the newsroom about uh, just your dedication here. What makes you come out and do this uh, year after year? Obviously, this year you have turned around the San Antonio Brahmas. A tough year last year. This year you guys are in contention. So what kind of gives you the energy to come out? You're looking pretty good out there, Coach. Well, this is what I do. I'm a football coach. Been a football coach uh, in a football family my whole life. So uh, this is what I enjoy doing and I, I love doing. And uh, I, I love the opportunity uh, that they've given me and uh, try to do the best I can coaching wise. All right, Coach. Well, thank you very much for your time. And of course, for our viewers that may not know, Coach Wade Phillips, the son of the great Bum Phillips uh, out there, the Houston Oilers. So, yeah, Coach has definitely been around football for a long time. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. And good luck this weekend against the Arlington Renegades right here at home at the Alamo Dome. Well, thank you. And it's raining here. Weather wise. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> well, that is one of the benefits, yes. Mark and Stephanie, of getting the Alamo Dome is that, of course, we are inside. Thank you very much, Coach, and safe thank travels you. down here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And thank you, RJ. I love how accessible they've made Coach yes. Phillips this year. Yes, Especially absolutely. do live interviews during our newscast. Kind yeah, of cool. yeah. It's been a really nice uh, addition to what they're doing in the PR department. Mm -hmm. Kerwin Lonzo. I actually met him at the Alamo Dome over the weekend at the Luke Combs concert. Mm -hmm. So Kerwin has done a great job getting the thank guys you. out in the community. I know that they're going to be at El Camino, Pete's Taco House. they got a lot of different things going on. So make sure to check out their website. And, of course, KSAT Sports for more information on that. Horns, Horns forward. Horns. Yes. Forward. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Guys. Well, staying with sports, the PGA Championship tees off today, but there's another event that's hosted by the PGA of America all year round. It's called a. It's called PGA Hope. As ABC's Danny New reports, its mission is to share the sport in an accessible way with our nation's heroes. Get back. As the Professional Golfers Association of America prepares to host the PGA Championship this week. Good, again, a little harder. It will also be running dozens of free instructional clinics across the country as part of its PGA HOPE program. Well, I mean, it's changed my life. Randy Shack here is one of the organization's ambassadors, which he certainly did not see coming when he first joined in 2016. I was really hesitant because it's I've never tried to play golf. Uh, post injury. After Randy sustained a spinal cord injury while serving overseas in the Army, he did not play a lot of this sport that he loves. And really, he didn't socialize much either, which he says is common for veterans when they return home. Prior to that, I just stayed home. I, did, I was a big hermit. But with the urging of his wife, Randy finally attended what is the bread and butter of PJ Hope, a six week free clinic with golf professionals to help veterans, one, have a little fun together. At the end of the clinics, there's usually like the Army versus Air Force versus the Marines. And two, rediscover a sport they love, perhaps with new adaptations. For Randy, that event in 2016 was the first time that he used one of these adaptive golf carts that actually allows him to elevate and take a fuller swing. I mean, being able to do something that an able-bodied person would do, it was it was. It was pretty amazing. Great moment here. Iraq War veteran Randy Shack. And eight years later, not only is Randy helping thousands of veterans connect and compete together with these free events, but as you can see, one of his best putts even made it onto SportsCenter's top 10 plays, probably inspiring a lot of fellow heroes. It can be done. <laughs> By the way, HOPE actually stands for Helping Our Patriots Everywhere, and it is in 47 states now. They also host tournaments for the different regions to compete against each other, and Randy has even been competing in the USGA's new adaptive golf tournaments they started a couple years ago. Adaptive golf is really picking up. In New York, for ABC News, I'm Danny New. Thank you, Danny. You can see here on the PGA HOPE website that San Antonio has multiple of these programs around the city. They're at TPC. Randolph Air Force Base, the Rim Golf Academy and Driving Range, Fort Sam Houston Golf Course, Lackland Air Force Base, the Golf Club of Texas, Hyatt Hill Country Golf Club, and the Mac Wiley Golf Center. So if you're interested in this program, you can visit pgareach.org. Right now it is 940, 77 degrees. You are watching GMSA at 9. Well, Memorial Day is coming up, and before we know it, the 4th of July will be here. So with these major holidays around the corner, there are some big deals available in stores to look forward to. We're going to tell you more about those deals after the break.
If you are looking to purchase a big ticket item, a lot of stores have big sales during the holiday weekends and a few are right around the corner. That's right. Memorial Day is almost here, plus the 4th of July and Labor Day. That's not far away. So when is the best time to buy, though? ABC's Tim Pulliam tells us how you can save. Record high prices caused by inflation are making it difficult for some Americans to buy big ticket items, but you can find good deals. One of the best ways to save money is to plan your purchases, especially your big purchases around three day weekends. They offer some of the best opportunities for saving. Experts say to strategize now to take advantage of upcoming sales. Memorial Day is really known for its great deals on TVs and appliances. So that includes things like washing machines, refrigerators, but then also smaller ones like coffee makers or vacuum cleaners. It's also a great time to buy furniture. So the theme is that it's all about home items as people gear up to spend time at home over the summer. July 4th is another opportunity to get discounts. Outdoor furniture is big for July 4th weekend. Also, we see some indoor furniture and appliances, especially summer type appliances, things that allow you to take advantage of the outdoors, your patio, uh, that kind of thing. But don't wait for July 4th if you see a great deal. I don't think you can go wrong buying your outdoor furniture on Memorial Day. I wouldn't want to tell anyone to wait. And then towards the end of the summer, we'll see Labor Day sales. What really jumps out for Labor Day is mattresses. So if you are in the market for a new mattress, you do want to try to wait until Labor Day. We also see furniture, uh, electronics, generally speaking, and then appliances. Great deals will also come around on Black Friday and Cyber Monday if you're able to wait. But before you buy, experts suggest you think about what you need to purchase. You want to start researching exactly the model and make that you want before the sale comes around. So then when you see the price drop, you can make your purchase. Tim Pulliam, ABC News, Los Angeles. 946, Justin's back. And I just took a quick look at radar over your shoulder like I like to do every now and then. Yeah. Um, and I do <laughs> see a few showers trying to work their way in from the Gulf. Yeah, they're trying. Yeah. And most of that's pretty light stuff. I, I think the big question is some of these models want to cook up some showers and storms by lunchtime. Mm -hmm. I'm not too early. Complete conv completely convinced of that, but we'll see. I, I'm going to show you another model. So we're <laughs> looking at a lot of different okay. models here uh, coming up. But first, uh, we're looking at the uh, radar. And as Mark uh, pointed out, yes, we do have some moisture starting to come up from the Gulf of Mexico. So this is probably going to result in some drizzle, some sprinkles here over the next couple of hours. But what we aren't seeing on here is any real rainfall, showers or storms yet. I think that uh, we will certainly get some a little bit later this afternoon. I think it's just a question of timing and where some of these boundaries end up. So this is the different model that I spoke of. And if you remember the last one we showed had storms blowing up over San Antonio right around midday. This one doesn't necessarily show that it holds off on the rain a little bit. And I think that's probably makes a little more sense. But as we head into the afternoon, you see the top of your screen. These are the storms that will be coming in from the north, and I think this is one that we do need to watch. There will be a boundary here, and as it sinks south into San Antonio, we should get some development along this boundary, and this is where we could see some severe weather as well. Again, I'm not completely counting out the fact that we can get a few storms midday, but I think our better chance probably comes a little bit later this afternoon. And then as we get into tonight, still some showers and storms possible. This wants to develop a storm tomorrow morning. So again, everything's kind of all over the place and it really depends on the outflow boundaries. And what we'll do is we'll keep a close eye on where these set up today and where we uh, where we think these storms will develop and we'll keep you uh, updated via the KSAT weather app. Uh, but by tomorrow afternoon, this does not have much. I still think we could see a few storms uh, developing, especially south and east of San Antonio. The Storm Prediction Center has us at a two out of five. If you're looking at a one through five risk here in San Antonio, a little lower down to the south and west. And uh, the risk for severe weather gets a little bit higher as you go up I-35, which makes sense. This is kind of the corridor uh, where not only will there be quite a bit of severe weather, but I think there will be a lot of heavy rain too. We kind of miss out on the heaviest of the rain. Uh, we could pick up a tenth uh, t to a quarter of an inch, depending on if you get a strong storm moving over your house. But uh, I don't think our uh, totals will be anywhere near what they're going to see across East Texas later today. Severe threats here are going to be hail and gusty winds. So once we do get some severe weather, those will be the main two uh, issues that I think we'll be dealing with. Flooding, not so much. Tornadoes, we can't completely rule that out, but 
it's a low end risk here in San Antonio. Right now, 76 and cloudy. Humidity is way up there at 88%. We've got southeasterly winds at 13 miles per hour. And uh, right now, most of the storms are up there around San Angelo and Dallas and then trailing back along a dry line in West Texas. But it's this boundary right here. That's the one that will be sinking south towards our area today. And that's one to watch, I think, uh, for potential development. Uh, as far as uh, temperatures go, 86 this afternoon, 40% chance of rain, 20% chance coming up tomorrow, 89, and then the heat really cranks up. A lot of sun over the weekend, and that'll get those temperatures into the upper 90s. Next week will be hot too, and not only that, it'll be humid, so we'll have heat index values likely above 100 each and every day. Hmm. So with that in mind... Uh, we're going to keep our fingers crossed for some rain today. Well, thank you for sticking to our no 100 degree plan. Yeah, yes, Wednesday. that's true. Yes, we, of course. We appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, we're going to pump the brakes on putting any extra <laughs> digits on there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. We appreciate it. You got it. I appreciate it. <laughs> 950, 77 degrees. When we come back, a look at the new film in theaters tomorrow about the life of Amy Winehouse. What the actress who plays her says was the most important thing for her when she took on this role. Welcome back. It's 953. Well, Amy Winehouse made headlines for her incredible voice and tumultuous personal life before passing away back in 2011. Now her story lands in theaters with a new film. CNN Direct Dam Damagella gives us a look at Back to Black in this theaters this weekend. I want people to hear my voice. The truth behind Amy Winehouse's storied life and career is adapted for the big screen. You need to know this. I ain't no spy scale. Marisa Abella takes on the late night singer in the biopic Back to Black and wanted to give viewers insight into who Amy was as a person. The most important thing to me was that I could connect to Amy's soul and that I could speak to something in her humanity that would remind people that she not only was the, one of the most incredible, talented artists that existed in our time, but also a real human being. Fifty Shades of Grey director Sam Taylor Johnson had the difficult task of telling Amy's story and digging beneath the tabloid headlines. It became quite a clear path for me to just focus in on how do I best celebrate her as a singer-songwriter and a genius that she was. And it was really about, you know, going back to the music and allowing her voice to guide us through the movie. Abella's biggest challenge was mimicking Winehouse's unmistakable singing voice for the film. It's less authentic because it's not Amy. Amy, the authenticity of Amy in each moment, this, that spontaneity can only be brought about by the person that's doing it in real time. So I just had to get close enough to her sound that I could portray what it was that she wanted in each moment. I write songs because I've got to make something good out of something bad. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. If you're headed north on I-35, need to factor this into your commute this morning. We've got construction at 35 in Topperwine. You see the flashing arrow trucks are out there right now getting everybody to merge to the right. But it's created a backup that extends all the way now past O'Connor. And with those transguide shots, you can see we've got uh, quite a bit of cloud cover out there. We'll see clouds certainly for the first half of the day. Some chances for storms this afternoon. Some could be strong. Another small chance tomorrow before it gets warm this weekend. All right, we'll watch out for the storms, but we'll enjoy the 80s while well, we can. Thanks, for Justin. A days. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Have a great Thursday. See you back here tomorrow morning for GMSA.